Good morning. Um, thank you all for attending um, Relocation 101. This will be Module 1. Now, before we, we begin Module 1, um, I want to provide you with uh, a short introduction to the, the overall course and all the modules and how they are set up. So Relocation 101 is an overview of the Relocation Assistance Program. The goals for Relocation 101 are to develop a deeper appreciation for the law and its sensitivity and its fairness towards the displaced persons. This course will explain the principles of the Uniform Act in implementing regulations. It will describe the Uniform Act early planning requirements, describe an agency's advisory services responsibilities, describe the elements of comparable replacement housing, calculate replacement housing payments for owners and tenants, explain housing of last resort, and compute residential and non-residential moving costs. So how is this course structured? Relocation 101 is comprised of seven modules. All seven modules will initially be a live webinar. However, the webinars will be recorded for future access. Each webinar will not exceed one hour. If you miss a module, it's no problem. You can catch it on the recording, which should be ready the following day. It is recommended that you do complete the modules in order. The first module scheduled today. The last module for Relocation 101 is scheduled on November 16th. Several of the modules are separated out into several parts due to the size and keeping each webinar at one hour. Each module does have a quiz at the end. Once you have completed the module, you will be provided um, with instructions for the quiz. You must pass each quiz with a score of 70% or better, you may retake the quiz if needed. Once you have successfully passed all seven modules, you will be provided with access to the final exam for Relocation 101. You will be sent instructions on how to access it. You must receive a 70% or better to pass the Relocation Assistance 101. For each module, you will be sent uh, the participant's workbook prior to the scheduled webinar, or as today, uh, you have a, a, a link to download that workbook. In that participant's workbook, it is structured so that you can take notes directly under the slides if you wish. So please make sure you have assembled and you've downloaded any handouts either sent to you by email or provided to you by an online link. Now I will be using PowerPoints throughout this class, but hopefully it will not be death by PowerPoint. Being an online class, we're not able to do the group, the, the group groups on the case studies. So we will have occasional knowledge checks to keep you involved and to test your retention of the material. So hopefully the knowledge checks will make it engaging and enjoyable. So please ask questions at any time by writing them in the, in the, in the question box. Um, the more you participate, the better the class is going to be for all of us. So if you're watching the recording and you have any questions, then you can still send questions to me either by email or by Teams. So for those of you that are new, please do not get overwhelmed as it would be tough to grasp every detail of what I am going to be teaching you. The class is not going to give you the technical understanding to do everything we talk about. That you'll gain when you attend the upcoming Relocation 201 and 202 classes. 
and also when you go back out into the field with experienced relocation professionals and you gain some on-the-job training. So my hope is at the end of this course, you will appreciate the complexity of relocation assistance and learn the general concepts. You will leave this course with several things. A general understanding of the right-of-way clearance. To be successful relocation agents, you need to have an understanding a lot about relocation and a little about everything else. Relocation, it uses the appraisal in various ways. We must understand the acquisition process and often we are coordinating our actions with the appropriation process and we need to know how to determine ownership. Full understanding of, the, of relocation and its interrelationship in right away. Relocation agents are generally the first and the last phase that the displacees will see. The appraisers come and go quickly. The acquisition agents roll through the process pretty quickly too. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead and let's get started. First module, module one. This is an overview of the Uniform Act. So our agenda for this module, we're gonna talk about the Uniform Act, the laws, regulations, and procedures, understanding appraisal, just compensation, and negotiations. So let's look at our learning outcomes. At the end of this module, you will understand the underlying theme of the Uniform Act. You will be able to differentiate between a law, a regulation, and a procedure. Understand what makes an appraisal. Explain the roles of the appraiser, the review appraiser, and the agency regarding fair market value and just compensation. State the rationale for an administrative settlement. So first we are going to briefly cover how the law on relocation assistance has evolved over the last 60 plus years. So in 1949, Congress passed the Housing Act, which proclaimed that every American should live in affordable housing meeting minimum occupancy standards. In 1962, the Federal Highway Act became the first federally mandated program to provide minimal relocation assistance for individuals and business concerns affected by highway project. And that was mainly move costs. The payments were capped at $200 per family or individual I'm sorry, $200 per individual and um, $3,000 per business. And this included farms and nonprofits. They limited the moving cost to 50 miles or less. Now, $200 per individual does not sound like much, but especially with what we pay, you know, the benefits today. But putting it into perspective, in 1962, a loaf of bread was only 50 cents. A gallon of gas was only 31 cents. I think today I filled up it was $3.15 a gallon. Um, cost of an average car, 4300 Cost of an average house, 12700 So 200 a family, you know, maybe, maybe is more than we think. So the Federal Highway Act of 1968 provided assistance in purchasing replacement housing. However, it was only applicable to highway projects. So by the end of the 1960s, Congress began to recognize the increased burden that the highways and other public improvement projects were placing on the displaced property owners and the tenants. Thus, the relocation, the uniform relocation assistance, and real property 
Acquisition Policy Act of 1970 was enacted. Now, this is commonly, commonly referred to as the Uniform Act. So as the character of the country changed and the public improvement projects became more urban in nature, they resulted in large scale displacements. So over time, a consensus was arrived at the, that the agencies needed to provide more equitable treatment of persons displaced. The initiative originally addressed the problem by providing special payments on a project or agency basis, but the payments were found to be inconsistent and people were not being treated equally or uni uniformly. So in 1987, the Uniform Act was amended. The U.S. Department of Transportation was appointed the lead agency. The DOT then delegated this responsibility to the Federal Highway Administration. So through this amendment, Congress in increased the amount of payments for the displaced residential persons. Additional assistance for previously unforeseen needs, such as reestablishment expenses, were also addressed in this amendment. So the main goal of the Uniform Act is to set the standards and bring the fairness and equality to those displaced. The Act required that the provisions be uniformly applied on all federally aided projects, even if there is no federal funding for acquisition costs. This means that if any federal funds are used in engineering, design, or construction, the Uniform Act must be followed. The Uniform Act adopted the concept that no displaced party should be worse off economically than before their displacement. So a main theme, the theme that you're going to hear often in relocation is equal to or better than. So another Uniform Act concept is that no one should bear a disproportionate share of the burden of a project that benefits the public as a whole. So in the Uniform Act, there are three titles or parts. Title I contains the general provisions, definitions, and it defines the eligibility for a displaced person. Title II addresses relocation assistance. Title III is labeled Uniform Real Property Acquisition Policy, and it includes appraisal and compensation issues. Some of its main parts are that offers will be no less than full market value, there will be no lowball offers are permitted. It sets forth requirements for appraisals. It mandates appraisal review. It also includes all offers must be in writing and that the owner must have time to consider it. Now, Title III also ensures that everyone will be given at least 90 days before being forced to move. So while the Uniform Act itself set out broad interpretations of Congress for a fair and equitable system, they left the detail of exactly how the law would function to the agencies. The Federal Highway was ultimately authorized to write a single set of rules or regulations for implementation. They're set out in the Code of Regulations. 
more commonly known as CFR. If you take a look at this slide, it shows the relationship between the law, the regulations, and the procedures for implementing the Uniform Act. The first item is the law itself. In the next level down, you will see the federal regulations. These have the same force of the law and they are viewed by the courts as the standards. The regulations may not be in conflict with the law. The regulations actually list the expenses that are eligible for reimbursement. And finally, Federal Highway requires each state highway or transportation department to prepare a detailed set of procedures that the department will use when implementing the Uniform Act and CFR. For the most part, people performing relocation in Ohio will primarily refer to ODOT's policies and procedures but it is always a good practice to review the federal regulations whenever you have a specific question. And just as you saw on the last slide, the law in Ohio also follows the same trickle-down process. The laws in Ohio that adopt the main concepts of the Uniform Act are contained in the Ohio Revised Code Section 163. Those laws are then further defined and refined in the Ohio Administrative Code Sections 5501, 2 through 5, 01 through 06. And finally, the Ohio Revised Code and the Ohio Administrative Code are all adopted in a set of policy and procedure manual sections that define how the acquisition, the appraisal, and the relocation processes are put into practice at Ohio or at ODOT. So our relocation assistance program sections are contained in manual sections 6000 through 6700. So please get in the habit of using the online versions of the manual as they get, they get updated from time to time. And that is the only way that you're going to ensure that you have the current versions. Okay, now we're going to do our first knowledge check um, to see if... Question number one, for the Uniform Act, the U.S. Department of Transportation was appointed the lead, lead agency for oversight. This oversight was de delegated to A, the U.S. Congress, B, Federal Highway Administration, or C, the Ohio Assembly. And the correct answer is Federal Highway Administration. Congress creates the laws. The U.S. Department of Transportation then delegated to Federal Highway the responsibility of writing the regulations. Question number two. The major components of the Uniform Act consist of three parts. Title I, Title II, and Title III. So which of these titles focus on relocation? The correct answer is B, Title II. Title I, if you'll remember, has definitions and discusses eligibility, but Title II discusses the moving, the replacement housing, and relocation services. 
Title III focuses on appraisal and negotiations. Although there is in Title III, that's where we find the 90-day notice that goes in the relocation offer letter. But Title II is the one that focuses on relocation. Question number three, FHWA requires transportation departments to prepare a detailed set of procedures. What does ODOT have to meet that requirement? A, the appraisal, which establishes just compensation. B, right away in construction plans. C, ODOT policies and procedures. Or D, Ohio revised code. And the correct answer, of course, is C, ODOT's policies and procedures, which are our um, manuals. If, um, okay. Um, foundation of Real Property Acquisition. The Fifth Amendment to the Constitution affects the government's right to take or acquire property. It imposes a requirement to pay just compensation for property taken. So how do we do that? Title III of the Uniform Act contains the appraisal requirements. So the first step in the process is for the agency to employ an appraiser to estimate the fair market value of the property. It is only an estimate, and it's not necessarily the fair market value, as you will learn more in a moment. The second step is to review the appraisal for reasonableness and consistency, and to make sure that the appraisal meets all standards. The reviewer may step in and become the appraiser of record. The third step is for the agency to set just compensation or for fair market value at an amount not less than the approved appraisal. So at ODOT, just compensation is set by an agency official. Neither the appraiser or the appraisal reviewer may set fair market value. Only an agency official can establish fair market value. If you look at 49 CFR 24.2 A3, you will find the definition I have up on the slide now. Notice the words, independently and impartially prepared. We want the value of the land to be acquired. We will never steer or direct to a value. So please note that CFR and policies and procedure citations at the bottom of this slide, you will see this throughout the manual and it is hoped that these citations will provide a good reference for you in the future. So here are the major requirements for a valid appraisal. So first of all, the appraisal has to comply with the definition of an appraisal that we just reviewed. It must contain an adequate description of the property being appraised. So why is it important to relocation agents? Because we only pay to move personal property and anything purchased as real estate will not be moved, even if salvaged back by the owner. It's still real estate, even if they salvage it back. In the next module, we will see a corresponding requirement that the relocation agent work with a business owner to identify personal property items prior to the appraisal. The appraisal must also employ all relevant approaches to value, contain a description of the comparable sales, and be signed as of an effective date. If you want more detail on what makes a valid appraisal, I encourage you to sign up for some of ODOT's appraisal training classes. 
So if you remember from a couple of slides ago, we discussed the Uniform Act requires a review of all all appraisals prior to the agency establishing just compensation or fair market value. Here are a few of the major appraisal review requirements. Through an examination of the appraiser's analysis and presentation of data, the reviewer determines if the appraisal is in compliance with the requirements set out in the regulations and he evaluates the appraiser's conclusions. The review appraiser must recommend the appraisal before it can serve as a basis for establishing just compensation. The reviewer may either be an employee of the agency or he may be a fee reviewer who is under contract with the agency. And again, we have only scratched the surface on appraisal. If this is something you would like to learn more about, I encourage you to attend the appraisal classes offered here at ODOT. So the, what, what I want you to uh, take from this is the appraiser comes up with his estimate of value, the reviewer recommends, the agency establishes the fair market value. So this slide shows an overview, again, of the appraisal, appraisal review, establishment of just compensation. This may help you to understand the process and how they are interrelated. If you follow across the chart, you will see who does what in the information that they use to make their decisions. So again, the appraiser prepares the appraisal according to the criteria set forth in the regulations. The qualified reviewer then reviews the appraisal for compliance. Then an authorized employee of the agency actually determines and sets what is believed to be just compensation or fair market value. Now at ODOT, the district real estate administrator is usually the person who determines the just compensation and establishes the fair market value. Okay. Question number one, at ODOT, just compensation or fair market value, FMVE, is set by A, the appraiser, B, the agency, or C, the review appraiser? And the correct answer is the agency. As you will remember, the, uh, the appraiser establishes an estimate of value. The reviewer approves and recommends the appraisal, but it is the agency that determines and sets the just compensation. Question number two, the review appraiser can become the appraiser of record, true or false? The answer is true. In rare occasions, the appraiser can become the appraiser of record. Um, an example would be, you know, he does not feel he can recommend the appraisal, and so he makes changes and he becomes the appraiser of record. Question number three, why is it important for the relocation agent to view and understand the appraisal? A, to calculate a salvage value. No, because that's an acquisition function. B, to decide if the owner is receiving enough money. No, that does is not um, something that the relocation agent um, gets involved with. C, to determine what qualifies for moving costs. That is the correct answer. D, provides you with info needed to prepare the RE95. 
that is not the correct answer because you should already have that RE95 prepared long before you have the appraisal. You need to make sure that whatever the appraisal is paying for as real estate, that you're not paying to move. Okay, so let's move on to, um, now let's talk about acquisition. So once we, we have established the fair market value, we move on to the acquisition stage of the project. Title three of the Uniform Act contains the acquisition requirements in 49 CFR part 24.102 defines the regulatory requirements for acquisition. So this slide shows the basic acquisition policies under the Uniform Act. Acquisition, acquisition ranks up there with relocation as one of the most sensitive aspects of an agency's activities, since it involves the direct personal contacts with the public where the property valuation is discussed. These basic policies provide protection to the property owner, and they can assist the agency in acquiring the needed property interests through negotiations. The agency or the appraisal must advise the owner when the property inspection will occur so the property owner or duly appointed representatives can be present. The agency must give the owner a summary of the basis for the amount it has established as just compensation for the proposed acquisition. And in Ohio, our policy is that we provide a copy of the appraisal or the value estimate at the time of the offer. So if it is a partial, partial acquisition, the amount of the compensation for the property acquired and any damages to the remainder must be stated separately. The negotiation should be conducted without any attempt to coerce the property owner into reaching an agreement. The agency cannot take possession of the property until it pays the owner just compensation. Well, this would either be through a closing for a negotiated settlement, or it could be by making a deposit in court for a parcel that goes to condemnation or appropriation. So our current practice at ODOT is that the offer, also known as the Notice of Intent to Acquire in Good Faith Offer, be delivered face-to-face, -face, in person, or via a mailed out letter. ODOT's policy is offers by mail must be by certified mail. Owners must be informed of the agency's acquisition process and how it works in their specific instance. So most states and agencies use some type of an acquisition brochure to ensure that the property owners are made aware of all the facts. ODOT has when ODOT needs your property brochure. And most times, most times this brochure is mailed out early with an introduction letter. Sometimes it's also presented when the offer is made. Owners have to be given a chance to consider the agency's offer. The owner may have some information relevant to the value of the property, or they may suggest altering the terms and conditions of a proposed contract. Negotiations should always be a, involve a give and take, and the agency must consider all of the owner's counteroffers. Owners in Ohio have a minimum of 30 days to consider the acquisition offer before an agency can file for appropriation. 
The agency must notify the owners that they will be reimbursed for incidental costs they incur in transferring the property to the agency, such as recording fees, transfer taxes, mortgage prepayment penalty fees, or any prorated property tax. So there are four main, main outcomes for ODOT's acquisition process. You know, first, the owner may agree to the offer and sign the purchase agreement. Second, the owner may propose a change in the offer or the terms of the offer, and the agency may agree to these changes. We call this an administrative settlement. An administrative settlement allows the agency to pay more than the approved offer of just compensation. So for example, let's say the agency's offer is 200,000, but the owner has countered at 215,000. So 49 CFR 24.102, I outlines this in the federal regulations. The agency should look at any factors related to the acquisition that may justify the increase, such as valuation issues. The increase must be reasonable, prudent, and in public interest and must be supported with written justification. In addition to more money, other terms or conditions might be modified, like an extended per, um, possession date or retention of an improvement through the owner retention or salvage process. And third, the owner may agree to sign a right of entry, allowing the agency to commence construction while continuing to negotiate for the purchase. So this does not impact the owner's ability to require the agency to commence an appropriation action at a later date if negotiations fail. And finally, if the agency cannot reach an agreement with the owner, condemnation will be necessary. After condemnation proceedings are initiated, a legal settlement may still be reached, which is basically the same as an administrative settlement. The case may also proceed to a jury trial where a jury verdict will decide the final amount of compensation. Now in Ohio, projects for public roads are given quick take authority, which means that once fair market value is deposited on a parcel with no structures, the agency is granted control of the property to begin construction. Now, if the property has a structure, possession will only be granted by the court when they are satisfied that the owners have vacated the structures. Relocation assistance is very important here, and it can get tricky if the owners are filed upon and they are reluctant to work with you to get relocated. In all four scenarios, the agency will either own or control the parcel so the project's construction can begin. Okay, we have another knowledge check, knowledge check 1.3. Question number one, at ODOT, which statement is not true? A, the owner is given a prompt written offer for the full amount of the fair market value. That is true. B, the appraisal can be provided but is not a normal practice. That is false. At ODOT, our policy is to always give the appraisal at the time of the offer. C, negotiations should not be conducted by coercing the owner. That is true. And D, we cannot take possession until the owner receives just compensation. 
that is true. So the answer is B. We cannot, we always provide the appraisal. Question number two, the current practice at ODOT is that the offer, also known as the NIAGFO, may be delivered in person or by regular U.S. mail. And the answer to that is false. The offer can be mailed, but it has to be mailed by certify mail, not regular U.S. mail. Question number three, owners in Ohio have a minimum of how many days to consider the fair market value before the agency can file for appropriation? And the answer to that is 30 days. Okay, so we're almost done with our module. And here um, are our kind of review our learning outcomes. So before we moved on to the quiz, let's go ahead and go over what we learned. So first of all, what is the underlying theme of the Uniform Act? So the people People who are displaced by a federally funded or assisted project must be treated fairly and uniformly, pretty simple and straightforward. And so very important for what we do in relocation. So next, do you understand the difference between a law, a regulation, and a procedure? If you remember, we had a couple of slides and charts on this subject, the law is the broad interpretations of Congress. The regulations implement the law and define everything a bit further. Those were federal highway. The procedures are the operation manuals for agents to understand how the laws and regulations get carried out in the relocation process. Those are, our, on a state level, that's our ODOT manual. So anyone want to offer up one of the key components of an appraisal? So we've got a written statement. It needs to be independently and partially prepared. Qualified appraiser. Opinion of defined value. It needs to be supported by presentation and analysis of relevant market information. Adequate description of the property as of a specific date must be signed. So just compensation rules. The appraiser estimates the value. The reviewer approves and recommends the appraisal as a basis for just compensation, but it is the agency that establishes the just compensation. Administrative settlement allows the agency to pay more than just compensation also allows us to consider the owner's request to modify other terms and conditions. Also, please keep in mind that all of the activities you learned about in this module must comply with the Uniform Act at all times. Okay, we are, th this concludes this module. So if you have any questions, you can go ahead and put them in the question, the question pod. Um, otherwise, you will receive the instructions for the quiz. I did want to wait a couple minutes. We do not have any questions in the questions pod. Uh, the quiz is required and the information will be sent in the follow-up email that's going to come after the video processes so please um, expect that by the end of the day you will need to utilize our LTAP e-learning system in order to access the quiz and those instructions will be provided to you via email okay well thank you everybody for attending today 
and I hope I will see you back on Thursday for module two and that is split into one morning session and one afternoon session because there's so much information. So thank you very much for attending.